A very good morning to you. Welcome to the first edition of the show for the week. I'm Yemi Adebayo. It's great to have you join us again. I'm Taya Salah. This is what the show looks like uh, today. We're continuing our countdown to the 2018 FIFA World Cup. And um, yeah, ex players, administrators, I've been speaking about uh, Nigeria's uh, performance at our World Cup. Former Super Eagles uh, striker Victor Ikweba, uh, Prince of Monaco, has set a quarter final target. At least a quarterfinals appearance for the Super Eagles of Nigeria and Russia next year. He says any other thing less than that, um, it's not a big deal. Yeah, um, we've gone to the second round um, at three occasions, so uh, we should do one better uh, when we get to Russia. All right, let's look at football quickly and go to athletics. Russian athletes remain banned from international competitions as the IWF, IWF Council unanimously approved the continuation of the suspension that started in 2015. Sad story for Russia right there. The IWF insists that the country has not done enough mm. to clamp down on doping. Bad news for Russia. I mean, they're trying to make a comeback uh, into the international sporting community. But this news um, definitely uh, puts a stumbling block uh, in their way. So it's over to them to try and sort themselves out ASAP. Also on the show, uh, this time we're going to talk about tennis. And the Davis Cup uh, final went down yesterday. And we have our champions, France. That's because Lucas Poil uh, won that deciding rubber uh, against Steve Dassis to earn France their tenth. Davis Cup title. Congratulations to France. Stand up for the champions. That's what we're doing on the show uh, today. And that's why we continue uh, the show from Yemi. Um, what a match it was uh, yesterday. And um, I think we should start with uh, what happened uh, between uh, Wilfred Songa and David Goffin. David Goffin is the guy, of the man of the moment mm -hmm. right now. Got to the ATP uh, World Tour final. So he's in great form. Uh, he went into that game um, with Belgium trailing 1-2. Yes. So he knew he had to win that particular match and to give uh, Belgium a chance of winning the first uh, Davis Cup title. And that's exactly what he did against uh, Joe Wilfred and Songa. Impressive stuff. Um, you know, he, like you said, he showed that he was a man uh, for the big occasion. Correct. And, um, uh, I mean, brought his country uh, back into it. I mean, you couldn't ask for more uh, from the young man. Uh, got the job done, uh, you, you know against um, Joe Fretzonga and the home fans <laughs> in Lille. It, it didn't really matter much. Uh, Goffin uh, stepped to the courts, brought Belgium uh, back at the race. Right. So, it's unfortunate the way it all turned out, but mm -hmm. I mean, he did his part. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. A lot was resting on his, on his shoulders. I thought it was going to uh, cave in under the pressure, Correct. but no. Uh, it, it did the job, mm. uh, but the others just couldn't, you know, rise up to the occasion. Absolutely. I mean, that's why, I mean, that's uh, uh, David Goffin there taking on uh, Joe Wilfred Songa in, the, uh, in that match, uh, trailing 1-2 against uh, France. And he did what he had to do. Uh, he defeated Joe Wilfred Songa 7-6, 6-3, 6-2 in straight sets. And that meant we had to go into a deciding mm -hmm. rubber. And that pitched um, Steve Darcy's was a decent player mm -hmm. uh, against um, Lucas, Boy. Lucas Boy, who for me this year has been flying under the radar. He's had an amazing year. He's won uh, a few titles on tour already. So I just felt um, going into that matchup, I felt France had the advantage and it turned out uh, that way exactly. I was seeing... Um, uh, Joey Fresonga frustrated in this match against uh, anybody will be against uh, anybody will be against uh, Goffa. Now he lost that one, but then he had to uh, depend on Lucas Paul to get the job done, and that's exactly what uh, Lucas Paul did uh, for France uh, yesterday against uh, Steve Darcy. And uh, that match turned out to be uh, a very one-sided one, ended in straight sets of six-three, six-one, and six-love, and that's how France uh, ended up winning their tenth. Davis Cup title. Uh, I was saying uh, it turned out to be an anti-climax yeah. because uh, it's a decider you expect it to be a lot more a competitive, probably go to uh, a five-setter. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't turn out that way and um, Lucas Paul just had too much uh, in the locker for... 
I, I, you, can, you, you can understand what, what this means. Um, 2001 was the last time that uh, the French, the, the second of the Blues too as well, yes. that they won uh, this and they've lost on three occasions uh, in the finals. And to, to, to do this in front of your own fans awesome. is awesome. The last time they did it, it wasn't in front of the own fans. I think they did it in Australia. And now they got here in Lille. Everybody was rooting for them, even though they're big man. <laughs> couldn't couldn't, yeah, well, who couldn't cares, get man? them couldn't over get the them over the line. Yeah, but, but then um, Lucas World, the man of the moment, the man got, of got the job done, and you know this is a moment to treasure uh, for the French. Yeah, confetti in the air, celebrations all over France right now after winning the tenth Davis Cup title. So that's it for uh, tennis. Now we we'll just quickly uh, we'll move over straight away to Abu Dhabi, the season finale uh, for the 2017 Formula One season. And um, yeah, there was not a lot to actually um, you know race for. Let me put it that way, other than for pride, uh, other than for building momentum into 2018. And uh, Yemi Valtteri Bottas once again showing. Uh, that he has what it takes to mix it with the big boys. I won this particular race very comfortably, started on pole and led all through and they just couldn't catch him. And um, that was his third win for the season. And it's looking very likely that this guy uh, might get a new deal with um, Mercedes. He should. He should based on his performance, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, he should. Um, I've been impressed with him. Right. Uh, a lot of people say, a lot of people would argue, you know, it, it you know, divides opinion. <laughs> Some will say if you're racing for a good I know, team. I know. Yeah, you do well, yeah. uh, but I think he's done well. Uh, well, you know, Lewis Hamilton tells us that we know that the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix is very difficult to overtake, mm. but I don't, I don't really see much into that. The man did his job, ensured that um, he, he got to start in pole position, right. and ensured that everybody stayed uh, behind him. Uh, the story for Valtteri Bottas this is a um, he could have done more. He started well, could have done mm. more, capitulated at some point, wasn't winning anymore. At some point, a lot of people said he was a contender, but he choked when it mattered the most. Mm. But he needed to prove a point that, look, on the big occasion, you can count on me. On the big occasion, I can deliver. Right. And, and he, did just, he did just that. And everybody, you know, congratulated him, even uh, Lewis Hamilton. Correct. Everybody saying, look. You're a, you're a world champion on the day. Uh, yeah. You got a job done. I, I just want to uh, cut him some slacker. That's why we see Lewis Hamilton there try to uh, overtake. Got really close to uh, Valtteri Bottas, but he made a mistake there and ran wide. And um, uh, Bottas, Bottas just maintained his lead and went on to win that particular race uh, very convincingly. Um, I was saying we should cut him a bit of slack. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, Bottas. First um, year with Mercedes. Yep. Uh, you know, he needed time to get used to the car, Traumatized. get used to the team. And um, three wins in 2017 for me is not a bad return 